Hello everyone, this is Kanya again and today I am going to show you something entirely different and that is Asgard's Wrath. I have been playing this game for about seven or eight hours now and it's it's really good. It's just simple, plain and simple. It's really, really good. And it's the first game that I have ever played on Revive because I have been boycotting Oculus Store by now, but this game, honestly, if you don't play it, you are punishing yourself more than you punish Oculus or Facebook, because it's just really good. Okay, without further ado, what do you need to do to play this game on the Valve Index? Or, in this case, any other Steam game, uh, Steam headset. So, you need to install Revive. I guess most of you know what it is. Revive lets you play Oculus exclusive games in your Steam VR headset. And you can do that by just uh, clicking that Revive tab in your overlay. And then you can see all your games, which is in this case just Asgard's Wrath and the basic stuff. So there is their website, GitHub, Libre VR Revive. I will link this in the description. And honestly, it's just really, really simple. You go down, you, you go through the installation. You need to first install Oculus Home. You download the latest Revive installer. You install it, and that's it. What you need to know is that um, you need to restart your PC um, if your games are not getting uh, recognized in the Revive tab here. So uh, so that, that might be helpful or important for you. So that's really just downloading and installing Oculus and Revive. And then it's really simple. You just boot Steam and you have that Revive tab and you can start your game from there. All right, there are some things you might want to change in the game if you play on the Valve Index and Revive. First of all, um, there's no denying that Revive adds another layer of CPU frame time and therefore it's not as smooth as it would be on the Rift S or Rift, but it still plays great. And that's why um, I can live with this. Um, the, the developer is currently working on improving this, obviously, um, but you should know it. Sometimes there are micro stutters. It depends on where you are and so on and what happens. But it's still great to play this game. Okay, um, there are some things, especially for visuals, there is a post here that I found and many others that have done something similar, but this is a really nice and comprehensive look at everything um, that uh, improve your visuals. I have my Notepad++ thing open here. Um, you have to change three files and, uh, well, if you open the game, it edits them. And uh, in, uh, put your specific st settings in these files, and essentially they change the temporal anti-aliasing to be less blurry, and they change the gamma so that the game is a little brighter because it is honestly pretty dark and kind of also um, unbelievable dark. So so it's unrealistic in my opinion, but uh, that's obviously also your personal preference. Um, I will upload my files as a zip file that you can just install, just these any files and you can download them and drop them and then you have exactly my settings. Um, mine are a little different from these guys. For example, my gamma is on 3.0 and this guy has 3.5, a little brighter still. But um, in principle, th that's what I found most pleasing. So you can just download them if you want to and, and just drop them in, in your game. So then, you drop these files in, you have revive, you have uh, you have everything installed, you start the game, and that is basically it already. So I will, oh no, there's one thing, of course, that you have to do, and that is the controller binding. Yes, I forgot that. So uh, in the controller settings here, uh, you can select Asgard's Wrath, and uh, there are some bindings that you might want to have a look at, um, especially this less sensitive grabbing um, that you can uh, that that just changes the sensitivity of your grab. 
I changed that even more, which is this share binding from Kangar. That's mine. It's also, you will see that down here, I believe. If you don't see it, please drop me a line. Um, I edited uh, the binding even more so that what you can see here, this is the stuff that you want to edit. If you go to that and that little wheel, this is the input settings for gripping with the index and there are two different things that you want to know the hold value hold or force hold threshold is a threshold that you need to activate a grab the release is the threshold that has to be uh, so so the the force or the value of your fingers touching the index has to be lower than that to release the weapon again or whatever you grab so um i added the force hold threshold like like this and I increased the release threshold and I did that so that I can throw easier and with this I almost never accidentally grab anything even or especially with the left hand in fight uh, you sometimes um, inadvertently grab your sword and then it's in your left hand instead of your right hand which is very inconvenient and with this you actually have to grip like you have to use force to grip um, but uh, the release threshold um, is pretty high so um, so that uh, it's easier to get rid of them again in comparison so if you use this binding you can also of course play around with this but that's the binding that I uh, that I use and uh, you can just you can just activate that um, in your in your steam over uh, overlay settings so there you have it you have the oculus home tray tool uh, the, 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 wait. You have the, the Oculus Home that is not even active at the moment. Um, then you download, obviously, Asgard's Wrath. Then you download Revive. And then you go into the game. You, uh, you select the new controller binding. You close the game again. You drop these uh, files in, in your game folder. I will uh, write down where exactly they need to go. Um, and then you boot the game again and then you're good to go. I am not sure if you can drop them from the start. Sometimes these any files need a first start of a game to be even existent. Uh, I have not checked that before I started the game. So you might even be able to drop them before, but just so you know that uh, maybe you have to start the game and only then you can see these files. And then you're in the game and you have everything set up. It looks amazing. It looks gorgeous and sharp and, uh, and it plays great. So that's it already. Um, I will talk a little bit about the button bindings now. And that is the right A is a dash or a stomp. So obviously you move with the controllers and you have snap turning. And then the right A is a dash like this, which you can use to evade from uh, slashing enemies. Right, B is micromanaging your followers that you will get very early. That's very handy in game or like in fights, depending on what kind of follower you have. You want to have them in your back like this guy, or you want to have them at the front because they are defending. Uh, then left A is a little overlay that does not pause the game, which uh, where you can grab stuff that you can use to improve your followers like Frenzy Mead or uh, just as a he health potion. I personally would love to have a chest potion option or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's important to know that you do not have to hold left A. You can tap it and then move around. That's that's an option that uh, you might want to have you might want to know that because you you open it and then the enemy comes closer I, di I didn't realize that 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 worked until uh, not long ago I have to admit so here's uh, here's that tip and left uh, B which is uh, Y in oculus gives you the God mode I'm sure you all have seen that in some gifs already but what you get there is you get you become a gigantic god where you can with in, in in which form you can grab stuff 
and destroy it, by the way. Um, and you can also uh, move things around. Something that you have to know in God Mode is that the movement in God Mode only works in your settings um, with head steering. Otherwise, it's continuously steering relative to the body of your um, human mortal character. But so if you have head steering on, which I don't, I, I prefer the head steering off. Um, if you have head steering on, you can like go forward in the direction of your head. That's that. It's a bit nauseating if you try it the first time the wrong way, but uh, but this is a little extra tip you might want to know here. Okay, um, just so you see the frame times here, this is with um, a 1080 Ti and a Ryzen 3600 and nope, here. Oh, wait, where are my settings? Ah. No. Here, settings. So that is 100% super sampling, so no super sampling, and 90 hertz. I would advise you do that. I find it's sharp enough. <laughs> Die. Be my bird meat. Oh, another one. Raw bird meat. It's the tastiest part. Oh, and another one. Oh, I can farm that. <laughs> I did not know that. Okay, it's the tastiest part. Anyways, um, so um, where was I? Yeah, so I I think this is sharp enough for me, um, especially with these uh, TAA changes. And since the game is kind of heavy on your GPU, um, I like it that way. Because as you can see, it's not like I have a lot of headroom here, right? Um, just so you know it. Um, I have it on a 100% and if I want to change things, I would use the resolution slider in game. Because using the uh, SteamVR super sampling does not get applied uh, during the game. So you will have to restart the game. Um, if you have the resolution, if you have the quality on high and the resolution up at the maximum, that's 120%. By default, it's here, which is 100%. I think 120% is fine and graphics quality on high, as you can see, works fine with me, um, for me, but I have a 1080 Ti, so it depends on your GPU, obviously. Um, what you also might want to know is that um, even if you have performance headroom in your GPU, um, you might be CPU bound, uh, even with a very good uh, modern uh, CPU, because uh, that's just the way the game itself works, and also maybe another uh, the, the added effect of revive. So that is performance. Let's go back to mortal mode. And now I will just show you a little bit of the fire. Look at this, look at this graphics. It's just, it's just really beautiful. Yeah, I have this open for you to see. And you can also grab another sword. And this is my godly sword, which I can also throw. If I throw this, I will always have it back here if I grab it. This does not work that much, that well with this sword, that's a physical sword, let's say. And this, the throw, is always in the direction of your head, uh, center of your view. So, um, so you, that, that it's quite easy to aim, actually, if you, if you adjust your view. A little bit, uh, it's still uh, dependent on where exactly you, you release the throw, but it's uh, in the settings, like here, you can see the throw aim assist is on full, so that's uh, I, honestly it sounds like cheating, but you probably want you probably want that because it's otherwise it's it's just annoying. So let's have a little bit of a fight for you just as a final example of how that looks. So first of all, you can do this. That's cheesing, obviously, but it works. Grab stuff, put it in your pouch, great. Works really well, just very natively. Oof. And it's very visceral, as you can see. <laughs> Ooh, another one. Whoa.
Yes, that's it. That's good VR melee action. That's exactly the opposite of Skyrim. It's just so well done. So well done. It's it's just genuinely fun to play. And you have this. These guys, they have a blue extra health bar, which is a runic armor that only, you can see, I can parry. And it only works if I actually also move my sword. And this, uh, that was the runic armor that went off. Okay, so the runic armor always wears off if you parry that signature move here that you can see when they do this and then you can strike them, the runic armor goes away and then you can kill them like that. Oh, it's so fun. Ah, oh, it's so fun. It's such a great melee action. I mean, I, I, I still love um, the... I still love the magic action of especially uh, Spell Siphon, obviously, but that feeling of melee fighting where you actually parry, um, you have to hit the sword, you have to hit, um, you have to really have, have a timing that works, you have to um, lure them, you can dash and so on, and, and um, you can only... Uh, kill them if you have a certain combination of parries and counterattacks and so on. That's just great. There's just no denying that. And in my opinion, dual dual wielding a sword works best because you have a long reach and you have two ways uh, to parry like that. Um, that works great for me. There are other oops other weapons like for example oh you have slots on your back, left shoulder, right shoulder throwing axe that you get later in the game you can pull back honestly this is faster and does more damage but I guess <laughs> yeah, this has some uh, extra uh, abilities okay so take a breath this is Asgard's Wrath that's just a very very first beginning stage I went back to that for you guys and uh, and it plays great. It's it's much more linear than Skyrim, um, but I can wholeheartedly recommend playing that game. I hope uh, I didn't forget anything. I'm <laughs> probably rather the opposite, uh, a little verbose. But uh, you will find uh, all the links uh, and the information in the description and you will find my files to download in the description and I think um, this will make your life very easy. Um, I have no experience on how this game plays with uh, the traditional Vive WANs. Um, that might be a little bit more difficult but um, I guess there is information from other people out there. Okay, that was it. So drop me a line if you uh, have more questions or just tell me uh, what you liked or what you would like to have different. And see you next time.